is starting, I don't think. <laughs> All right, welcome everyone. We are here for a YouTube live to share about mending by hand. I am Heidi Parks. We are also joined by Ali Dijon. Uh, she runs the makery and is organizing things and mailing kits for us, Aruna. And she goes by Buku on YouTube, um, or not on YouTube, on Instagram, and then also by Hikaru. And we are all going to give some introductions and we'll share a quick mending tip with you. And then we will also be answering some questions for you. So you are welcome to type into the chat. I'm going to type hi right here. So please um, don't be shy in that venue with communicating with us in the chat. We will be very excited to answer some questions about the class and about mending as we get to that point. So uh, if everyone wants to say hi real quick, and then we'll get to our, our men's. Um, I'm Heidi. I'm in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and I make a lot of quilts by hand in addition to mending. I'm Marona, and I'm in Toronto, and um, I do a lot of different kinds of textile-related things, and um, um, yeah, and uh, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> um, I love the quilts that Heidi's, Heidi makes. Beautiful, beautiful work. Thank you. Hikaru? Hi, uh, hello, it's Hikaru Noguchi from uh, Tokyo, uh, Japan. Uh, I'm knitwear uh, specialist, uh, knitwear designer, and I developed many different uh, mending techniques uh, uh, now, and I want to show some uh, little tip today for you. And I'm Ali Dijon, founder of The Makery, and I'm in Boulder, Colorado. I love to make things. I love to make so many things. And I also love to put together creative experiences. I believe that creative nourishment is just so good for our souls. All right. I'm going to share with you one of my favorite things to mend, which is leggings. Um, I sew my own leggings now. I piece them by hand, which is very exciting. A lot of hand piecing on there. And they tend for me to wear out in between my legs and also on the top of my thigh and on my knee. When I'm mending a pair of leggings, I have to, of course, sometimes turn them inside out. And that can be a little bit tricky when I am adding a patch. You can imagine, um, that it's very challenging if you use straight pins. So I'm going to shift the spotlight to my hands. If I've turned this inside out, it could be number one, a little bit hard to figure out where my knee is on my leggings. So it can actually be helpful if I put them on to find where my knee is, or if I'm looking for a particular place that needs to be repaired, um, I can kind of easily find that because of the hole that's in them. I've got a pair of leggings that I didn't make myself, but that I have mended a great deal. And I think these are the ones that have a real hole in them. So here you can see, I could easily see where I wanted to put my patch in here. If I were mending on the knee, like I already have, that might be something that I would need to put some real effort into turning it inside out. So here I've got this hole. And when I am cutting my fabric to mend the hole, I like to use some scrap jersey fabric. This is a four-way stretch cotton. Um, meaning it stretches up, down, left, 
and write. I once used <laughs> an old t-shirt to mend some leggings. And then I found I was showing my plumber's crack to everybody when I was wearing them because it wasn't as stretchy as it needed to be. So I learned kind of the hard way that it is in fact important to use really stretchy fabrics, fabric that's as stretchy as the leggings themselves. The leggings that you make, are they self-drafted or do you have to use a pattern? They are self-drafted. I did a combination of tracing a pair of leggings that fit me comfortably. Mm -hmm. And I took a class on um, Creative Bug from Cal Patch. And that was, that was very helpful. It filled in a few of the blanks from just trying to trace a pair of leggings that had already been stretched out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Cal is great. I took a class from her. She came to Toronto and she showed everybody how to um, make like your own t-shirt based on your dimensions. And she had a tiny little chihuahua that she carried around in a little sling oh. during the whole class. It was like wow. the That's cutest so thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> so here, as I'm preparing to pin this, I want to make sure everything's laying flat and smooth. And as much as possible, it's helpful to match up with the seam in the mm -hmm. pants that already exists. If mm -hmm. I sew it next to the seam, but not to the seam, that creates mm -hmm. a weak point that will probably fall apart on me pretty quick. Mm -hmm. If I were to use straight pins, especially if I was pinning at the knee, turning it inside out is a mm -hmm. moment where my hand gets all scratched up. So I learned the hard way not to pin with a straight pin. Mm -hmm. Instead, I use safety pins. Oh, I put them. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, the number of times that I scratched myself with my straight pins is really mm -hmm. pretty embarrassing before I realized safety pins to be safe. <laughs> mm -hmm. So and do, you, do you ever think about the color that you use for the patching? Because, you know, like, I mean, I think that those, those um, leggings are quite dark, but I guess if they're light, you wouldn't want like a... I don't know. I guess it wouldn't really matter. It would still look nice, but no, that's a, a very smart question. Another mm -hmm. one that I learned through trial and error here, you can see, I used some paler gray fabric mm -hmm. to mend these leggings. And if I turn them inside out for everyone, the places where it's busted through Mm -mm. start to look a little bit like either my skin is showing through mm -hmm. being lighter or like my underpants are showing through. Mm -hmm. It has that. So I find now erring on the side of putting something darker underneath with my skin tone looks the best. It looks like <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, you're not getting an accidental sneak peek of my skin, but <laughs> if it were a black hole under that, mm -hmm. that looks a lot better. So that's a wonderful question, Aruna. <laughs> so here I'm, I'm just stretching this out, laying it flat to pin this last corner. And that's mm -hmm. how I would put those safety pins on. And then you can imagine, especially if I had to really turn it inside out in a dramatic way, I wouldn't have cut myself there. And I mm -hmm. can double check looking on this side, you know, is it pulling funny or is it laying smooth? Mm -hmm. And this is looking really good. So I could now either use an embroidery hoop if I wanted mm -hmm. to do that, or I could uh, just sew through the fabric without mm -hmm. an embroidery hoop. And I find it's important wow. when I'm working with a hoop to think about how much I'm stretching things as I add the hoop, if I overstretch, it's going to turn out real weird <laughs> when I'm sewing it. So I like to have it just taut and I like to untighten that hoop because with stretch fabric, as I put it on, it can overly stretch. It can add some extra stretchiness to it. So I like a real loose hoop and then I can go in and tighten that up more. But now it's ready for me to do my mend. And 
those are my, my real big tips around using a safety pin. Mm. That's great. Thanks, Heidi. Yeah, I'm happy to show it. Um, let's see, I'll remove my spotlight there. And who would like to share the next tip? Um, I guess, is it okay if I go next, Hikaru? Yeah, please. Um, so in the kit, um, we included some um, sashiko threads and um, I went with indigo because I just like the, the way the color sort of pops up. But I was, I was thinking that for the sake of this demonstration, it might be better if I go with like a white. I'm not sure now, because I thought it would be hard to see the dark. I was going to just stick it on this wall <laughs> right here. And do you think I should go with dark or light? I feel like mm -hmm. you know? maybe the white. I think the dark is real easy to see. Yeah. Oh yeah, you think the dark? Okay. Uh huh. I, go dark. I voted white, but you know. Oh, okay. <laughs> so as you can see, um, the the scheme, you know, if you mm. were to pull a thread out, it mm. would just kind of become this tangled mess. Mm. And so the tip that I have is is how to kind of prepare your scheme. So when you receive your kit, you can do this ahead of time. Um, so what you do is pull the paper off, and then just kind of undo it until it opens up to a longer, I guess it's just like a longer loop. And then what you do is you take a piece of tape and you just sort of open it up to where, um, I find like the best place to look for it, sorry, I gotta take off my glasses, um, is where it got tied. So I don't know if you could see this, there's a little, yeah, we can see there. right there. Yeah. So that's a good spot to kind of start. And then you open it up till it's like a big circle. So take that spot and then just tape it. You could do this on a table. Let me just go a little higher. And so what you're going to do now is this part of the loop, you're going to cut it. Mm -hmm. So just cut that. And then <laughs> evenly divide this into three sections and you're just gonna be braiding it. You don't have to do like a super tight braid, just do like a loose braid. I don't know if you guys can see that. Oh yeah, that looks great. Yes. So you're just gonna be twisting it to braid it. And I do this with all my threads actually, even my embroidery. Um, floss and yarn that I use because I find that the length of it when it's cut is actually a really good length to sew with and mm -hmm. so it's okay to cut it it's not a it's not a big deal and so when I get down to the bottom um, I try to leave about maybe four inches so I'll stop at that point. So about, about that much. And then what I do is I take a little piece of string mm -hmm. from the braid itself. And then I just cut a little bit off. And then I tie it at the bottom, just a really tight knot, just like a double mm -hmm. knot like that. And then when you're ready to use it, you just go back to, I gotta turn my camera. You go back to where that little knot is and you just pull a little strand off at the top. And then you just pull down the braid. So I'm pulling down the braid. Mm -hmm. And then you get your strand of thread to start stitching. And then your braided thing is still intact. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. That's nice. That's it there. And then you'll never get a tangled mess. Because even if this gets all crumpled up because it's been braided, mm. it's going to stay together. And then you have like the perfect length length of thread here to start your stitching. Wow. Uh, so changer. do that before you come to the workshop. And then you don't have to kind of fuss with it. Um, yeah, it's like the perfect length for using it. So... 
And I wanted to also mention, I, I don't know, I, I just sort of decided to tell people what my favorite things were. I just sort of mentioned it because I was mm-hmm. looking at the kit. And one of the things that we included in the kit that I really love is the um, the needle pullers. Mm. And if you ever sort of see me stitching, I'm always, I always have these on my fingers and it, and I find, you know, as, as makers and stitchers, we're using our hands so much. And I find that those um, needle pullers just really kind of save your fingers from all Mm. the the stress Mm. that it kind of goes through. So Mm. I think that that's a a really great thing to have in the, the kit that you guys get to all get a set. So great. Yeah. Thanks, Aruna. Oh, you're welcome. It's so nice to have tips to not have to try to deal with tangled thread and yarn. And it's just, it makes the whole creative process a little bit more um, seamless. (laughs) It does. Hildegard comment. Yeah. That was a great idea. Oh, I just, I was reading from the chat in the class. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> um, we have some, some participants from Michigan and Ohio, mm-hmm. California, Oregon, uh, two people in Portland, Oregon. So uh, it sounds like, and Linda says good ideas. So they're, they're liking that tip a lot. I just had an aha moment while watching you braid that I have some, merino wool that I use for cruel embroidery and for mending things with wool. And it's always a terrible tangled mess. And I could do this. I like, I know about the braid for sashiko, yeah. but when you were pointing out that you could use it for embroidery floss, I realized, oh, it would work for this merino wool also. You know what I've also seen that people mm-hmm. have done is, you know how there's like a little um, hoop at the top mm-hmm. there? Mm-hmm. I've seen people use like just like a ring, like almost like a key, like a not a key ring, but just sort of like a large ring. And they would oh. just put all their threads on that ring. Oh, and then you could kind of you could kind of bundle it up still. Like it still would take up less space, but then you would have all of your colors together, grouped together, wow. and it just makes it even more neat. And then oh. you can hang it on the wall too, like in your studio if you're not if you're not working on it, and then you could see where it is. And, Mm. Yeah, I thought that was weird. Oh, actually, you know what would work really well is like the shower curtain ring. Mm. Oh, yes, because yes. it's usually open and close and add it mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and it's pretty fat at the bottom, so you could add a lot. Super smart. It's a nice idea. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and we're getting more international now. We, we have hellos from Ireland and Toronto. So over to Hikaru, who's in Japan right now. Yeah, okay. All right, uh, it's morning, uh, it's uh, 20 past eight, uh, so. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to show you uh, on this uh, maker's kit, uh, I introduced some mohair silk yarn from South Africa cowgirls booth and uh, cashmere yarn from Italy. Uh, the both of the uh, thread I use a lot for my mending. Uh, so uh, maybe some people are not very familiar with this uh, uh, yarn. So I want to show you uh, how to deal with this uh, yarn for mending. Or uh, I want to just show you how to start. So the... Uh, this silk mohair. Uh, on the kit, uh, we put uh, the uh, needle threaders, uh, yarn threaders, and uh, can you imagine that it's quite tricky, maybe a little bit tricky to put this fluffy yarn on the, the needle. And also on the, that kit, uh, we prepared a special darn a darning needle, which I ordered especially uh, in Hiroshima uh, needle manufacturer. Uh, they made it uh, the uh, needle for us and uh, use the needle threaders, uh, uh, yarn threaders uh, 
uh, to put this fluffy yarn on the needle. And I always use darning mushroom for my dar uh, darning and bending. And tip is not stretch a lot, but not to loose, uh, loose. So just comfortable uh, stretch, not too much. Then I always use this uh, uh, hair elastic, okay? And to make sure it's secure, and I found this way is very e uh, easy to start. And so, for example, if I want to do some stitch here, some stitch here, and I never make knot on the end, I already start maybe one inch, three centimeter uh, outside of where I want to start. And then start where I want and maybe leave about 10 centimeter here. But nice things about mohair, because the yarn can tangle very easily. So you can start from one, one inch outside and maybe just leave only a little bit, only a little bit here, here. Then, okay, uh, I change my camera upside down. Oh. So people can see my hand more easily. Okay. <laughs> You'll have to show us what kind of stand you're using. That looks kind of cool. <laughs> okay, so. So the area which I want to start and uh, about one inch outside and I push the needle, I push the needle and then pull and oh, uh, pull the needle uh, thread and just leave only a little bit and here. And I show you uh, the seed stitch, just to go back a little bit and then go forward. But Karo, I think you just have to move a bit or is it just me? Ah. Yeah, okay. that's better. Okay, go back a little bit and then go forward. And go back a little bit and go forward. This is a seed, uh, seed stitch, which I use a lot for my mending. Uh, and because the mohair is a, one of the strongest animal fiber, uh, so it's quite useful for using uh, done on sock uh, and give very nice, fluffy, gentle look and still uh, strong and very practical uh, fiber. And you can use uh, mohair for not only knitwear, maybe you can stitch on the denim and uh, maybe some uh, flannel shirts. Uh, looks great effect and uh, it's very pretty. So end of the uh, thread, maybe go out, go out uh, the one inch outside and take the uh, elastic out, yeah, elastic out and take the dining mushroom out. Dining mushroom out and okay, so this is the, the what I've done and turn it over here. And you can see this long, long stitch here and just pull it and all ends come to the back. Okay, and for uh, this mohair, you don't need to tidy the ends, 
you just cut. And this fiber tangle each other and it's never come oh. up. And so easy. Wow, oh, that's great. Yes, that's so I love using this mohair for my mending. And it's then you so don't have a little knot bumping and irritating. No. Mm. It's very smooth. Yeah. Do you find after you wash it, does it felt a bit the mohair? A uh, little bit. So that yeah. uh, little bit uh, gives more strength on the stitch. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yes, Thank you. Good. It's oh, so freeing to not have to worry about knots. <laughs> Ali, do you want to close us out? Yes. Well, first of all, thank you to Heidi, Aruna, and Hikaru for these sneak peeks into Mend My Hand, which is coming up February 3rd through 5th. It's a three-day online experience where each of these three amazing artists and teachers will take a day to celebrate and teach you their take on mending. It's so great because all of the teachers are present throughout all of the three days, even though they may not be teaching their students. And it's just a beautiful community to learn alongside each other. So the morning session is sold out, but we have a little bit of space in the afternoon. We'd love to have you join us. We'd love to answer any questions and you'll get a kit in the mail. It's robust, it's special. And we spent a lot of time choosing just the right ingredients is what I like to call them um, to, to create a really special experience. So let us know if you have any questions. We're excited to see those of you who've already registered and signed up. And thank you all for being here. And thanks, Heidi, for doing the YouTube live. <laughs> yeah, thank you for joining me. Um, I will you. continue to look at the YouTube live. So if you have questions, you can type them there and I'll give an answer. And please like and subscribe, of course. And there's a link both in the chat and in the YouTube video itself for our class. So you can easily find that. Um, if for any reason clicking the link isn't working for you, you can just go to themakery.com and it's one of the current retreats. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody.